On this episode, we're going to be talking with Slava Novogenia from Mahjong Time. Hi, Slava. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for inviting me to the show. And yeah, what's your questions? Well, first, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. You're a celebrity in the community because many players play at Mahjong Time. I have all, all my videos that I do online play are all Mahjong time. I think it is the best platform for playing online. Well, yeah. I don't... <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. That's the best platform. There's nothing better. <laughs> and uh, We do have the most rules. We do have the best technology. We do have the most beautiful game on the Internet. You know, I agree. the game, how the game started. Let's think about it. The game started many years ago, uh, 1920s, 30s, was it? But why it started? Because it's so beautiful. Because people were fascinated with the tiles and, you know, this shuffling, the sounds and, and the actual gameplay. It's different. It has a wall. It has, it has winds. And, uh, and, 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 and we are trying to mimic exactly what, uh, People are fascinated about about this game. This is why you see the game is 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 realistic compared if with another uh, with other uh, with other games that are available. So we we really try to mimic the actual gameplay, and this is why many of you like it, I guess. Yeah, I love it, and this is why I only play at Mahjong Time. I've been on other sites before I committed to playing at Mahjong Time. And I, I just didn't care for the interface. I do feel like Mahjong Time is the most realistic. And so I share about it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that's, that's what we're doing. This is what we are always trying to accomplish, always trying if, if this this is how the real people, uh, real and the real guy, game play, if this is how they do, then this is how we make it. This is why you haven't seen that any other platform would uh, give you a penalty for a wrong maja because that's a part of the game. We believe it is a part of the game and it has to be, uh, players have to make mistakes. This is how it goes. Players do make mistakes yeah. on the real table and they should be able to make uh, mistakes online because that's part of the part of the game. If you remove it that, is. it's not the same game. I do see some other platforms that are successful, but I, I don't understand. I don't understand. How can you have a tournament uh, where you can't make a mistake? Hmm. Well, the tournaments, there are always mistakes. There are always people who make a mistake and, and, have, a, uh, and have a penalty of uh, 25 points, or now it's 50, and American mm -hmm. Mahjong, and, and Richie, they get a chombo, and, uh, and I'm sorry, they get, uh, you know, whatever penalty is there, they open their hand and it becomes red, also like an and uh, an, Ameri uh, an American Mahjong, and they, and they get some minus points. This is what happens in the real game, and the real tournament. This is what happens in Mahjong time. So this yeah. is why you see, and some people do ask why, why it was penalized for, you know, making a, a wrong... Uh, oh. Yeah, this is why, because you're penalized in the real life. This is why. I think some people don't realize they're making a mistake until that chombo happens, and it happened to me last week. Oh, let yeah. me just look at let me look at what we're seeing here from our audience. I want to say thank you to everyone for joining us during our conversation. If you have any questions, write them in caps, and that way I can quickly scroll through and get your questions in between our conversation. So I see here we have. Uh, I missed some of the first viewers on, but we have Ahuva, Barbara, Katie, Albert. You might even recognize some of these players well, I, from my yeah, time. I see some, some people saying hi, and so, yeah, I say hi to everybody, but I only see Facebook user. I don't see a name, so I can just say hey, hi to everybody, thank you, but I don't see who's saying what. Yes, I, and I'm not sure why that is. I, I'm new to using the software, and I'll find out. But I do have on my other monitor, when I look to the side, I can see players' names. We have Donna Kassman. We have uh, Barbara Fisher and Ahuva, who I mentioned. Taylor Board is with us. 
uh, Irene Glen Glenland, Laura Burdenson. She, these yeah. a lot of these people play right. at Mahjong time, so yeah. they've been very excited to uh, be with us on this episode. So tell us how you personally came to learn about Mahjong. Well, I didn't know about Mahjong before somebody introduced it to me. That was that was that was 2004, I think, when that happened. And um, and I ventured as a co-founder of Mahjong Time just after playing one Hong Kong Mahjong game. Maybe, wow! Yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe because I won the first game, I thought that <laughs> the game is relatively easy to learn and it's a lot of fun to play. Maybe, maybe because of that. But soon after, in a year or so, we released Hong Kong, and then MCR, American, and Richie Taiwanese Mahjong came later. And most recently, we have released Siamese Mahjong. Yeah, uh, on a different different platform. You have a different platform, but you use your same login. The same login. You can use the same login, mm -hmm. but you have to download a different software. Okay. Uh, and Tony... I just want to say real quick, Tony Rizzuto popped in. He said he met you at the Mahjong Madness Tournament, and he's saying hi. That's, hi, uh, hi, Tony. Yes, yep, yes I Tony. do remember you. Yes, we did meet in Vegas. That's great. So if, if you don't know uh, viewers, people who are viewing, Slava was at the Mahjong Madness Tournament, tournament with Gladys in Scottsdale. So how did you do? Well, I did not play. I just go there for fun. I want to meet uh, players. Uh, oh. I I meet uh, Gladys, and and um, we're partners and and this. So this is why I go primarily. But I I, I did I did think of playing in a tournament. I was late. Uh, there was a Siamese tournament. I didn't want to play in a big one. You know, the three hundred plus mm -hmm. players that. Uh, but mm -hmm. there was a small Siamese tournament, about ten tables or so. And I was late for half an hour. If I wouldn't be late for half an hour, I would be playing in that smaller tournament. Uh, there's a question. Play yes. Add a Siamese to the regular Mahjong Time site. No, unfortunately not. This is intentional. We are trying to split all the games. There are a few reasons for that. One reason is just becomes too complex for some people to find their way. We have so many games, so oh. many variations. And uh, when we tell them, hey, go to Mahjong Time and you can play it, and many times we hear, hey, where is it? Where, where can I find that game? So mm -hmm. I feel that that's one reason. And secondly, uh, it is easier to promote. So we could have many apps. We can have, and this is what uh, we're going to do starting next year. We're going to split the games in different uh, categories. And, um, yeah, this is the, and the first one is Siamese uh, was, um, was released this way. Okay. So you say you're going to split the games? You mean they'll be on different platforms? Well, like, for example, American. You're, uh -huh. you're logging into Mahjong Time to play American, mm -hmm. but you have other options. So yes. uh, next year, sometime next year, I don't know when exactly, but most likely you will be logging in and there will be only America. If you'd like to really? play Hong Kong, you'll have to log into Hong Kong Mahjong. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay, so you we have them out. Chinese right now. Okay, well, that's interesting. And that is a right. different room, different chat. So that way we can split the chat. So only oh, that room you can have see. American chat. Because they, typically American players want to chat uh, among, them, uh, among themselves. And same thing happens with MCR players or other players. Typically, they want to, and, and I think that will make more sense. So it'll be more seg seg well, not segregated, but there'll be separate separate platforms. Yeah. So we'll be playing with specific communities, and the chat will be for that particular style of yes. play. Yes, exactly. Interesting. Okay. Well, great. So there's a little bit about the future. So we talked about the past already, about how you started off with Hong Kong Mahjong and rolled out, uh, you said, Taiwanese American. When did Richie come to be in Mahjong time? Richie? What about Richie? Uh, when, when did it, when was it rolled out in oh, relation to the out. other oh, versions? Um, I think we rolled out, uh, the first was Hong Kong, 
then um, MCR uh, and American, and then Taiwanese and Reach. Reach actually was the last one to add. Oh, really? Very, okay. Very last one to add. Okay, uh, excellent. Yeah. Well, I, I've been looking forward to seeing bigger numbers with uh, MCR and Ricci here in America. Yeah. It seems like a lot of the players are in Europe. And so I have to play early in the day if I want to play those versions because the rooms are almost empty in the evenings here in America. So I'm hoping to see those numbers increase. So that we can, we yeah, Americans in order to can practice. numbers, uh, we need to go to Asian market. This is where the players are. Uh, margin time at this point reflects whatever is happening in Western uh, uh, Mahjong, basically. But uh, yeah. in the Asian market, of course, there are many players. And um, that's the whole sure. here, right after the release of the next, uh, uh, next version of Mahjong time, which is called Epoch. Uh, and uh, this is where we're going to um, try to market uh, the game uh, in Asia so we can get oh. more Ricci players and MCR players. What can you tell us about Epoch? At, at least some things that I'm, sh I'm sure some things are a bit top secret, but what can you tell us about Epoch? Um, it's beautiful. It's much more beautiful than this one, and it's much more realistic. And uh, some people might find it a little, I don't know, maybe weird. I don't know, because it's different. When I first saw the, the, uh, the hands on the table, I did feel like, oh, wow, there's something. The hands are covering the tile. The hands are not doing the, uh, the way I, I, uh, I feel they sh you know, should be moving. And, and some, some people may find it, but after playing for one deal, I just feel like this is the, the right way and the other, and the current version without the hands is not right because this is how you play. This, uh, as we started uh, the conversation, uh, we are trying to make it as, as realistic as possible. When you play Mahjong, you do see player hands. Yes. You might not see their faces, but you always see their hands. Okay. And so this is I, I think I saw you test it. I I, yeah, I, I saw a test recently and I saw the hand with a ring and a tattoo. Yes, you can have tattoos, you can have watches, you can have uh, rings, and there is a, 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 already a good variety of nails with art. Not just, you know, oh, red or, or yellow. It's each nail has its own art. And my wife is working constantly right now on this, and it's going to be a oh. um, She loves what she's doing right now. <laughs> well, that's exciting. So we do have a question here. Sharon says, "When you for when you first start playing online live, I'm sure it was fun. Did you ever imagine how many people would be teaching just by doing that? How do you feel about that? Let's see here." Um, now, Sharon, is that question for me or is that question for Slava? Let's see. When we are playing online live, did you ever imagine how many people would be teaching just by doing that? Well, <laughs> I, go ahead. When I play online, yeah, I, I, I understand I'm teaching some, some people, but I don't know how many. I don't know. I, I know people... Uh, some many people that uh, watch my live streams, they already know how to play, and we're playing together. At least the side yeah. piece. Um, I used to live stream Ricci Mahjong. I don't think I streamed anything else other than Ricci. I think it was okay. Ricci and uh, and America and Siamese. Okay, so, I remember seeing a Washizu once. Oh yeah, Washizu is kind of a variation of Ricci. So yeah, yes. yeah I was I was streaming Washizu. Okay, let's see here if we have any uh, questions. Let me just double check here. Um, John Davis is on. Do you uh, do you recognize John Davis? He's the one who does all the amazing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Art, of course I know. Artwork. Oh, no, he, I meet, he, him. He meet him at this tournament in Scottsdale, and I because I promised him to play in his tournament, but oh, he wasn't organizing. It was somebody else organizing. It was Linda organizing that tournament this time. Oh, I see. 
All right. Well, um, let's see. Is there anything else that you want to share about with uh, the upcoming uh, events with Mahjong Time? I know that we're finishing up a tournament season, right? And there's going to be a new season coming up. What can you tell us about tournaments at Mahjong Time? Well, we have different types of tournaments. Um, the marathon, which has um, become pretty successful and very competitive, it was the last one to add. We have, uh, we have um, elimination tournaments and we have uh, summarized tournaments when everybody plays for uh, how many rounds? Uh, I think it was or four laps, so that's uh, about four or five hours, I believe. And oh, wow. so, uh, simultaneously, you play some simultaneously, and then you summarize the results. Then we have elimination tournaments, which these tournaments happens on Saturday and Sunday. Marathon, uh, why I like the marathon, and why people like the marathon, because it's a tournament, but it's available all the time. As soon as you have four players, you play the tournament. And I think this is why it's becoming successful because it's always available. You don't have to wait for a Saturday or maybe on Saturdays you're busy like I am because I have mm -hmm. some, some, you know, personal stuff to do on, on Saturdays. I, I wouldn't be able to play it, but most of our tournaments are on Saturdays or, okay. or Sunday. So this one is successful, I believe, because it's available all the time. And um, the way the scores are calculated, it, it encourages players to play on and play on, play more and more. Um, yeah, just to make sure I don't see anybody's name. I only see like Facebook user and some Facebook users yes. uh, tell me hi. I just want to say hi back, but I don't know who, who told me. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I, trying to see also um, the, let's see, it's the, the person who said hi Slava already scrolled off my page so I can't see um, we do have a, a question here, though, from Chris. How do you pick the game of the week and post it on YouTube? It seems the winner always plays a, the big ear hand. Is that a coincidence? Or does that hand really get played and won that much? Yeah, I feel um, that that's a, that's a good question. Um, Yes, it is right. Always wins the 75-point uh, hand, which is the big year hand, because that's the most points. If we select uh, a hand that is fewer points than, than, than somebody who had this, this hand will say, hey, my hand is better. This should, uh, uh, yeah. but it's just it's just the way the card works. It's just one hand, mm -hmm. seventy five points. If there would be a few of them, then we would have probably a few different uh, winners. Um, you know, the hand winners. But this way, we just have one seventy five points, and you know, it's all about that hand on a weekly uh, weekly competition for the best hand. So this is why it happens. Okay. We somebody else, somebody else asked, can you can you tell us which are the most frequent winning hands? Is there any particular hand that wins more often than others? Do you ever have insight into that? And that was by John Davis. Yeah, we do have that information, but I do not compile it. I do not make it available publicly. If somebody asks mm -hmm. us, we could probably go over it and tell you, but mm -hmm. we're not, we're doing nothing without information. Well, I, I, I bet I could guess which hand it is. I would bet that it's consecutive runs second from the bottom. The one with four flowers, one, two, one, two. I see that hand all the time. Yeah, it's a good backup hand for a pair hand. It is, it's, it is a great one. Let's see, um, Irene asks, let's see, do the players know they are going to be in the play in the game of the week in advance? So if, if you win the game of the week, how do you know? It's Is it just through the newsletter or is there some kind of a notification? Oh, about the best, uh, best game of the week? So yes. How do we announce this? How do we... What was the well? How how does the player know they got the best hand of the week? Oh, and that's from my they get an email from support. They okay that they won. Okay, 
And let's see, um, Dara Collins is asking, what are, um, are some styles much more difficult to program on the site? So we have five different versions. Are some more difficult to program than others? I will say this, MCR is for the, uh, the hardest one, MCR. The next, okay. one, the next one in programming is probably Ricci. Yeah, because uh, it's so strategic. Yeah, there are so many rules like yeah. Puritan. Yes, yes, and then yeah. and then probably the American. Okay, it would be easy to program if it wouldn't be a Joker. Joker is a complication, a big complication, for okay. programmers. And I remember when we just started, we had so many issues with that. Okay, what about when the new card comes out? Um. Well, it's not uh, such a big deal, uh, but it does take a week to have the full cycle because it starts with uh, with the new card, then the developer has to implement it, then the testers have to test it, then typically we mm -hmm. do find something, then it has to go back to the developer, and that takes about a week. Okay. Well, I think your turnaround is fantastic, personally. Thank you. And I think a lot of players play live as well, so they can kind of get used to the card live before they play online. Because playing online, you've got to be, I think, even more on your toes and alert because the game tends to be quicker online than it is live. I have found that to be true anyway. There is one question uh, more um, on the avatar. I was explained that. Um, well, I was wanting an avatar, and I was explained that I would have to start all over to get one and give up my credits and game. Doesn't seem right. Please explain. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. I'll check. Uh, okay, that's from Gloria. From Gloria. Um, okay. So the the issue is, you'd like an avatar, but are you changing your account? It seems like you're changing your account name because. You shouldn't have a problem with the avatar. If you're starting your account, you sign up. You can go and get any avatar you like. Some avatars might cost uh, some extra uh, coins. Uh, but but if you transfer your account, like you have one username, and then and then you have to uh, you'd like to use another one. So that's different. That's different. So I, I, I think this is related to this because this is the case when we cannot transfer the avatar. We transfer the credits, we transfer the coins, we transfer uh, even the rating we can transfer. But the actual avatar, we can't. Oh. Because we need, okay. the, we need the source of the avatar because when it, when it goes online, it already transforms into a different type and we can't use that type uh, to whatever. There is a technical complication, that's all. Uh, I see. But otherwise, we would transfer the avatar as well. So it's just easier for the uh, for the player to just go online and and reset the avatar again. But everything else they would transfer in this. Created. If this okay. is, is she's that was Gloria explaining. I don't know, but yeah, it mm -hmm. should be like that. No, no, I don't. I don't think that's right. Also, because avatar is just the one case we can't transfer the avatar when you change your username to another one. That's all. But everything else okay. transferred. All right, I think it's a great service that you provide. And because I know some people have had trouble with their, their account or they want to change, maybe they, they created their account with a different username and they decided to change their name for whatever reason. And so I have seen times where people ask, how, how do I change my username? And you would, there's uh, some technical uh, support that would, be helpful when that happens, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a typical situation is a Facebook. Uh, people who found us on Facebook and signed up, um, they typically have uh, their first name and last name and the username. Some people, uh -huh. people are okay with that, but some people would like to change it. And yeah, this is a common request from Facebook users. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to just double check here on Thank these you. Uh, chats. The... Pardon? Yeah, somebody said excellent games at Mahjong time. I just love to hear that. That's all. Oh, yes, very good. That, let's see, that was Irene. Thank you. Irene Lemon said that she likes to play, when the new card comes out, she practices at Mahjong time 
with the new card. That is definitely a way to quicken your or shorten your learning curve on that card. Play online. All right. So if you have any questions from the viewing audience, please write them in caps so that we can find them quickly. Okay, so I have one in caps. I, I responded. Uh, some styles much more difficult to program on the other side. Yes, I, I did uh, spell this one out. Uh, the okay. American is third hardest, as as I can see. The players do not know they are doing game. Oh, uh, yeah, we responded to that. The, the support should email them when they win. So can you tell me what are the most frequent winning hands? So that's probably related to American. Um, I, if you would tell me that we will have that question, I will probably prepare and then give you some real numbers. Right now, I just can guess, but I don't play American. Mm -hmm. I play Siamese, so probably frequent hands are different. I don't, I, I don't think I played one game. I think I played one only with this card on American or something. Not many. Okay. So let's look at the other questions. Just make sure we don't skip any. How do you pick the game of the week? Also on YouTube, it seems the winner always, yes, yes. As I already explained, it's 75 points, and we just can't give the 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 win to somebody ha who had a 50-point hand or, you know, even 60. Mm hmm So it's really about va the value of the hand. The value. We, the if, value. if we find some different criteria, I'm open. I'm open. How how else can we judge which game is better than the uh, than the other? It's just that's the easiest. It's 75 points. That's the maximum. You got it. And then we have a few games like that, and we just look at them and see which one um, is is better between them. Better means maybe it was won quickly, like uh, second or third turn, and boom, a win. That's something. Oh. So we look at what happened. Uh, what happened? And uh, there is comments actually. What happens? And and. We'll, we'll have to look and, and some other criteria and see how we can I use see. a specific game. Well, that makes sense. So it's the value of the hand and the circumstances around it. Yes, correct. So okay, that's excellent. That's the correct So earlier we were talking about how, uh, you know, the different versions will go to different platforms so that our chats will be more centric to the style of play. Has there been any uh, interest or um, um, ideas about bringing in other versions of the game, or do you feel that you have the best five versions of the game at Mahjong Time right now? Um, well, the one that I would love to is, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, right, Peterson? Rules. Right, Patterson. Right, yes. Patterson. Rules. I would love to, and and when they change the rules, just change them, and if I can talk to them, they won't change them for ten years. Then maybe. Then I think six years is what their timelines typically are. Every six years. Because it does take a lot of effort to implement these rules. And remember, you sent me that booklet with the rules. Uh -huh. I yeah. I looked at it and it is complicated it is complicated it will take us a year to perfect this so wow yeah well i i know a lot of military dependents would love to play mahjong online because when you're being transferred around the world sometimes it takes a while to build relationships and if they had an opportunity to play online that might be a, a really nice form of entertainment for them as they're moving worldwide. I just don't have the resources available. Yeah, to it. I, I can understand Let's that. Forget. Let's not forget, we have so many variations. We have seven styles. That's at least. That's the ones that are available immediately in, in the game. And and there is still a little more. And support is taking, is taking you know, quite a bit of, uh, of resources. Oh, I'm sure. Something well, you guys do it on Because always have to have to support whatever we have, and it always change always changes so much. Like for the last ten years, the uh, the technology the um, has the technology changed so much that we always have to um, upgrade whatever we already had. If we keep it the way it is, 
we can't move on because certain things will not be available. Like for example, the app won't be available, or 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 some 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 uh, some uh, security certificate won't be available. We won't be able to make some transactions, financial transactions. There's so much, and this is why we we don't have as much time to develop new things. But we did have time to develop Siamese. That was quite a project. It's not e that wasn't easy. Because of these two hands, we had to invent these racks. We had to, you know, uh, you know the the way you you move the tiles. It took us so much long, so long to um, to perfect because we were getting errors. I remember you you were moving tiles and then the gap showed up. Oh, um, yeah, we were fighting <laughs> with the bugs forever, forever. <laughs> now, yeah, it's a different design. Two hands at one time. So I can imagine. The, the redesign was yeah, pretty heavy. So it took us a lot of time. And it delayed well, the epoch a lot. So this is why I, we will probably have epoch okay. much sooner. But well, we'll we'll be patient. Have, by the end of the year, not, we'll have it. I'm sorry. Please go ahead. No, I was, just, I was saying that by the end of the year, we're, um, we would like to release that, that game with, uh, with hands on the table. That'll be interesting, and I, I, I look forward to trying it out. We do have a question here from Marnie. She says, how random are the tiles dealt? It seems, uh, I seem to get the same dealt hand. I don't know if I've experienced that, but how does that work in the program? We just use the standard built-in uh, random number generator that is available on the computers. Each computer has that. And based on that uh, random number generator, we, we dealt the hands. They're always random. Some people do say that, oh, well, I get the same hand. Mm, let's look at that previous one and let's look at the new one. I don't think you get the same one. Some patterns, you know, you, you remember uh, more and and they seem to be odd, or, or, but you're not getting the same, the same tiles. Okay. Let's. Yeah, I don't think I've ever experienced that. Experienced that. Maybe something happened with her, and she just felt like it was a deja vu moment. So I do see another question here. It came off of my Facebook uh, scroll uh, screen, so I don't see who wrote the question, but I do see somebody asked. Is it possible to create a quick Mahjong game for Hong Kong style that has a minimum of eight points? She plays on her iPad and cannot create it herself. Eight points. We do have eight points, I believe. Um, let's let me check online right. Yeah, I think I think I've seen eight points. Maybe what what she's asking is perhaps, if I may, that she's trying to create a, ta a, a custom table on the iPad. Are you able, do you have the ability to create a custom table or a private table on a mobile device? I believe Or is that only on a desktop? I believe so, but I don't remember exactly. Okay. Let's see. Uh, somebody was mentioning that perhaps Marnie was in the school games. On school games, if you play on a category table, you will see the same hands because you're focused on one particular category so that the tiles dealt to you are for that particular category so that you can practice with the tiles for a given category. So maybe you were in school games when you saw that same dealt hand. Could be. Yes, uh, somebody says you can't create on iPad. Maybe, maybe I, I don't remember. There might you might not be able. I, I don't know. I don't remember. I need to look. I just don't. I don't remember ever seeing it in there, creating one myself. So, but I know you can on a desktop. desktop yes, you can definitely do it on a desktop. Let's see. Marnie said uh, last night in Hong Kong, she had the same hand. Three times. No, is there a Ma I, is there a Hong Kong Mahjong school games? Uh, Hong Kong Ma uh, school games. Um, yes, if it's the school games, yes, there are the walls are the same for for the school games. But in real game, no. If uh, I could check that, if you give me your username, 
I'll check your games yesterday and I can show you the walls were different. If that was fun games, not school games. Okay. All right. Does anybody else have any questions about Mahjong time and for Slava? One, one person asked me offline, how many languages you speak? Uh, I speak besides um, um, English, uh, Russian and Romanian. Romanian is the language that Dracula spoke. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dracula was from Transylvania, and Transylvania is in Romania. And there was there was actually a real person. It's not a made up person. There was a real person. Really? Yeah. There was a vicious. It's like Ivan the Terrible personality, something. Yeah. Oh. He would invite, I didn't know. That. He would invite the elite and poison them and you know things like that. Wow. And this is why they started calling him Dracula. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of like our uh, Santa Claus. Santa or Saint Nicholas was a real person. Do you record all games? I mean, the games are archived for a few years. Hi, neighbor. Yeah, I'm from Moldavia. I'm not, I'm not from Romania. I speak Romanian, but I'm from Moldavia. Okay. So Irene is laughing at your comment about Dracula. Uh, so Peggy, uh, Peggy right. asked, how do you record all games? And what was your answer to that? I was trying to check on, on chat when you answered that question, and I missed it. Okay, what we missed? About, about games being recorded. Yeah, we archive the games for a few years. Once in a few years, we delete them because they're just taking too much space. But otherwise, we record them just to make sure we, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, load the game and see if there was a problem. Sometimes, sometimes you report a problem in the game, so we have to have a way to, to, uh, to review the game and find whatever was an issue. Most of the how does someone tell you a game that they have a problem with? Do they need to tell you what time they played or a date? Is there a time stamp or a game number that they need to reference? If you're playing from desktop, uh, then the time, just the time works. But if you're playing on, um, on Flash uh, game, then you might have to uh, click the bug report so we have the data. We don't the have bug the data. Report. Yeah, okay. bug report. But if you're on a desktop, just tell me the time and we're good. Okay. And let's see, someone did ask here, and the, their name scrolled off, so I don't know the name of the person who asked. But somebody did ask, is there any way to make the numbers larger in the interface? Some viewers have a challenge reading the tiles. Yes, and I, um, I do remember, uh, Michelle, you already um, told me about this. And we do have a solution, but I just didn't get a chance to improve that on iPads and Android. What we want to do is have, uh, have uh, on the right side, on the right menu, have an um, extra icon where you can click and we'll zoom in into the discard so you can see them better. And then, very good. Yeah, so that's that's the way we'd like to make it, but just didn't get a chance to. Okay, excellent. I'm sure many people will be happy on if you hear desktop, that. On the desktop, if you click mm -hmm. Control, if you click Control on the desktop, if you click Control and use your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out. Okay, and will it be like if I zoom, if I zoom? In, it'll make them bigger and will that hold until I zoom out again yes you can you can you can play that zoomed in and then okay when you like I might test that. I'll test that the next time I do a strategy theory or something because some people say they have a hard time seeing the tiles so I will try that out you can adjust, I didn't know you can adjust the that. angle you can adjust uh, pretty much everything by doing this control and the mouse. Okay. It doesn't work as well on Macs, though, because they don't have a, a wheel. 
but on uh, oh. desktops you have a wheel and you can zoom in zoom out okay well one thing that i have that i i just applaud mahjong time for is their technical support anytime i have had a problem i either ping slava or i send in a bug report or a customer request through the website and they are very responsive yeah we and this is one reason why i i totally support and share about mahjong time let's see i'm just trying to check and see if we have any questions here uh all right chris is asking can you go over again how to invite a friend to join a Siamese game? Well, Fred has to download the Siamese game and and log in and 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 you can play. It's 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 challenging to play against a specific person because if somebody jumps in, you'll play with somebody who jumped in. Uh, it's it is for modern time to create uh, only host can um, can uh, can invite players table. There is such capability on Mahjong time, but there is no such cap uh, capability on uh, on Siamese Mahjong. Not yet, not yet. Okay, uh, so you say not yet. So that is something that we can look forward to. Oh yes, oh yes, yeah. So currently, if you like to invite a game, uh, a friend for a game, um, let him download the software, create a username, register. And then go online at the same time and perhaps on the phone say, hey, I just click play, click play now immediately so we can play together. I guess that's the only way you can play right now. It's easier on Majanta because we have that capability, but on, on Siamese it's a little challenging, but not, not, not too difficult because uh, during the live streams on Fridays, I do play with Pamela and um, we manage to play many games together when we want. Well, you just click play again, and it's you too, just continually playing again and yeah, again. Yeah, but if somebody already waiting, you play, you click play again, and you will be playing with that one who is waiting. Oh, okay. So if someone clicks before if you the like other player, play, play again. Yeah, if you like to play okay. against a specific person, then you have to exit the game, then click, make sure that the, nobody is waiting, and then play, and then has the other person. Click play, and then you can play together. That's the only way right now. But yes, we will improve it, and um, it's just we're not there yet. So many projects, so many things we want to do. Yeah, not enough time in a day, right? No, not enough. <laughs> Someone, uh, Sherry, actually, I'm able to see her question here. Sherry Fassett asks, "Can you play Siamese Mahjong on an iPad?" Yes, yes. Uh, if you go to App Store. Uh, search for Siamese Mahjong. I'm sure you'll find that app. The app is $4.99. Um, you can download it. The desktop okay. is free, but the app is $4.99. And the same thing on Android. Desktop is free, uh, but the apps, uh, there is a fee. There is, pardon, can you repeat that? Download uh, the app on the App Store or Android. Uh, Google Play or yeah, it is okay. It, the the answer is yes. It is available. It's just four ninety nine. Okay, very good. So I'm going to test that out too. I didn't. I knew that you were working on it, but I didn't know it was an app that you had to download. Uh, I, 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 download. Live streamed, I live streamed from that app. I I live streamed from the actual app, and I did. And I did notice that it is a little hard to see the tiles. Yes, that's that's correct. And uh, when you play the app, the information of how many tiles are left in the game, how many were discarded, is not available. This is something we also would be adding, but it's not there yet. Okay. All right. Any other questions from our viewers? We want to try to answer as many questions as we can. And um, I just want to also again say thank you to Slava for joining me on this episode of Table Talk Live and thank you all for joining the episode it's wonderful to have you in the audience with us if you have any questions now's the time to ask yep, Slava that's the time, that's the time. Uh, let me look maybe we missed something yep I'm trying to look back and see let's see here I think we might have all the questions answered so far. 
All right. Very good. Well, I uh, wanted to ask you about a little bit more about the tournaments because I'm curious about that. If I wanted to play in a tournament, how would I, how do I get started with that? Because I know that there's one coming up. Is it in February? Um, the marathon, if you're talking about the marathon. Oh, marathon. Okay. Uh, which tournament you'd like to start? There uh, is a tournament. That American. Marath marathon. Yes. Uh, uh, this is the last season of the marathon. Marathon ends on December 15th. And then the next season starts February 15th. So there's okay. a vacation for uh, these two, two, three months, whatever we have. Um, basically, uh, to start playing in the marathon, you don't need to do much. You just have to find that table online, uh, uh -huh. join it. You can join any marathon. Any marathon. Any marathon you play, it gets recorded. And if you go to the community page, you can see the results immediately there. Community. And so you just play marathons during the season and the, your scores will be tracked. Oh, yes. Yes. The, the scores okay. will be tracked. Um, we do have an automatic suspension system. Some people already got suspended. They know how it works. But I just want to reiterate, we do not uh -huh. suspend nobody. Nobody gets unsuspended. Even I got suspended twice and I didn't do anything about it. Uh, because that was for a good reason. I did not finish. So if you do not finish, okay. if you have a bad connection, I know that's that's an excuse. I know mm -hmm. you can do nothing about it, but everybody else at the table had to restart. So there's a penalty for I that. See. Okay. So there, there are uh, penalties for not finishing a marathon. Yes. And for the first time, it's not, it's not too harsh. I mean, there, there is a suspension, but it's not too harsh. You first get suspended for 72 hours. If you do it again uh, during the same season, you get suspended for another 72 hours. If you, it, if you do it for the third time, if you uh, do not finish your, um, your game, then you get suspended until the end of the season, but you can still start playing in the next season. So you okay, get suspended I see. forever, never. There's no no permanent suspension. Permanent is is only until the end of the season. That's all. Okay, that's good to know. I would actually love to do an episode on tournament play. I have a list that would of be questions. Great. That would be great. Okay, very good. I well, we'll prepare, definitely I give you some data also how it goes, uh, and we could have okay. a table talk about this. Excellent. Well, we'll definitely meet up and, and arrange that because I'm sure there'll be lots of players interested in playing in tournaments at Mahjong time. So we did have, uh, let's see, a question here. Where did it go there? Um, uh, where, where would people, when do you go live with your live streams? What is your live stream schedule right now? Uh, I used to have two live streams. One was on Wednesdays, uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, that one uh, I will resume uh, maybe in a week or so. I'm just waiting for a demo version of the newer uh, software, and that will probably take another week or so. Uh, hopefully in a week. Uh, okay. The other live stream I have is Fridays at 3 p.m. and and that one is I haven't I haven't stopped that one. So every Friday 3 p.m. Pacific time I I live stream uh, Siamese mahjong. It's uh, Siamese mahjong night basically. Okay. Do you have these this information posted somewhere? Just in case we we forget the schedule. I don't think I posted it anywhere, but I now, talk about it each time on, when I'm online. Okay, so maybe in the recordings we could hear about the schedule. I've also noticed that you have a blog. Is that active? More or less active. We, um, we publish all the news events and that blog. So that blog might yeah. be a good place to yeah, post. Yeah, when we release, when we release the epoch, 
uh, we will publish it there. When we release uh, the other, okay. some good uh, major uh, updates, yes, we publish it there. And we could okay. We could publish uh, uh, information about live streams also there. Yeah, I guess that's a good. That would be excellent. And I could put a link to your blog in the description of this event so that people can find it. Somebody asked here about the Siamese Mahjong card. This was from Tony. She asked about the Siamese Mahjong card. Right now, the Siamese platform uses the National Mahjong League card. Has the, there been talk of programming the Siamese Mahjong card? There has been talk, but we're not programming it yet. Okay. We, we need more players, then we'll do it. I see. So we are focused on growing the player base. Mm -hmm. For phase if, one, if if the player base isn't mature enough, and you have too many styles, then one one player sits at the at the Siamese card, and now one an MGL card, and they both don't play. So I don't like that. When we have yeah. good liquidity, player liquidity, and uh, and Siamese with a national mahjong league card, we'll add another one as well. That's reasonable. Okay. Well, I think. I think we've um, had a really great opportunity to ask you some questions and get to know you a little bit. So I, again, thank you so much for joining me on this live. And thank you for inviting me. Episode. Oh, you're welcome. And we look forward to having you back with us. Next time we have Slava on, we will talk about playing in a tournament at Mahjong time. And I have a word document of all my questions. Because I I'm a little nervous about playing in a mahjong time tournament because I want to I want to vlog it I want to vlog my experience so that people can see what it's like and make sure that they know what they're getting into because if you get suspended we don't you know we wouldn't want you to take it personally there are reasons why that happens so these are the kinds of things that I want to talk about in advance before I actually commit myself so uh, we'll have you back on for that thank you so much for being willing to do that. So I'm going to say good night to you, Slava. Thank you again so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for inviting me. And again, thank you for your comments. Thank you uh, for, um, for good uh, reviews of uh, Mahjong Time. And mm -hmm. uh, again, I haven't seen any usernames. So I just want to say thank you again. But I haven't seen who commented what. I just want to say thank you, thank you. And... That's all. Please come to my live stream on Fridays on Siamese. We'll have a lot of fun as well. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll see you online then at uh, Siamese Marshawn. All right. We'll see you Good night, time. Slava. Bye bye. Okay. All right. Well, I just want to thank everybody for coming to this Table Talk Live with Slava. It was a great time asking him some questions that we've all had for a while. So it was um, a joy to have him. The next Table Talk Live episode that we will have, I'm just going to do a Q&A. So if anybody would be uh, interested in, and available, the first Tuesday in December, we'll do a live Q&A. It may be a short episode because I don't know how many questions people will have for me, but it'll just be me and we'll do a live Q&A. So I look forward to seeing you then. If you haven't joined my Facebook page, please consider clicking join, and that way you won't miss upcoming episodes of Table Talk Live, a Mahjong-centric variety show. Thank you again so much for joining me, and I look forward to the next one. Between now and then, may all your picks be keepers.